Man, this thing looks dark. I wonder if the mail guy's delivering my antennas for my goggles that I ordered a month ago. But we'll check that out when we get back. Let's head to the park. It's not that bad out here. Um, I had uh, thought about sitting inside the car. This is not the right battery. I thought about sitting inside the car and flying from the warmth of the car, which I might actually end up doing. Um, but I wanted to get out and just, you know, get get a couple test flights in, feel out the wind conditions and stuff like that. Some of those things that you know I wouldn't be able to feel out from the car, like gusty wind. I wanted to try out or see what they were like before I got into the car, and um, maybe like you know after I get this first couple flights in and get, you know, a little bit um, comfortable, I'll jump in the car and sit in the warmth of the car and fly out the rest of these packs. I got three packs for each battery. So today I'm at the field um, test flying this build. I talked about it in a couple of other videos, previous videos. Don't think I've done any YouTube videos on it. Um, I went through my GoPro earlier and I had like dozens of clips from videos that I had never posted. I just didn't like them, so I never posted it for the, for, the, for the Mini 2. A whole bunch of videos. So um, yeah, I was out couple different sessions flying this thing testing it out flying it this is um in my opinion this is probably a more midline build than i've ever built before um i built this channel based on you know how to get the best bang for your buck and not spend a lot of money to get you know decent performance or without the um without the compromise of quality um for a lower cost and in all of my previous builds i went with probably the the most inexpensive stuff i can find i bought all the youtube i mean all of the uh, amazon stuff that was like inexpensive like 30 dollar quad you know four sets for quad motors four sets of motors for my quads for like 30 bucks which you know like like seven fifty seven dollars seven dollar fifty cent motor something like that and they all work they all perform pretty good i mean i have not i don't have that much experience so i'm not going to be able to critique whether or not a motor is you know super efficient and all that other stuff like your bart wells and all your other fpv guys out there but what i thought i would do with this because i took advantage of a few of those um black friday deals is build a medium 
you know, medium range build and see what quality I was going to get out of it. So I thought I would tell you about this one. Um, uh, when I start getting into other builds, I will definitely start walking you through all of the components I'm putting in the build, how much they cost. Um, and like I said, at the end of this video, I want to talk about my Amazon store that I'm kind of opening up right now, which is going to start off by selling some FPV parts. Um, but for this, I went in and did a lot of research and I kind of figured out what I wanted to buy. So I bought right the first time, the first time um, versus buying a whole bunch of stuff to upgrade it. Um, and what I found out was is that a lot of guys, um, I can't remember, it's Oscar Lang, I believe it is, um, recommended the 2207 uh, motors for your five inch bills they are supposed to be the best balance between power and efficiency so did some research and on black friday i thought it wasn't that cold out here it's actually pretty getting pretty cold my hands are starting to freeze up um, i found a bunch of the um emax eco twos on sale for about ten dollars a piece i bought eight of them i planned on putting them putting them in both of my five inch quads but for now i've only put them in this one because i wanted to see how they felt before i ended up you know soldering in a whole bunch of motors that i didn't like and what i can tell you is i actually like them um previously i had told you that like my my little two inch build and my three inch build were my favorite quads and now that i'm kind of getting into this five inch build i am gradually starting to like this a little bit more um it's just got a nice power to weight ratio it does things that i wanted to do immediately at least with the last props it had lots of control um didn't feel underconfident with it um didn't feel overconfident with it but um for the cost and the build i felt you know that it was uh, a decent build to come out here and play around with some of these uh goal posts and lights to try to figure out how to fly through them around them and do flips and power rolls and stuff like that which i won't be trying in this video because every time you try to do something for the first time on video you end up with a major crash um and i don't want to you know embarrass myself um playing around with it so let's talk about the build real quick um again this is a dji hd build so it's a little bit more costly than your normal analog build um i've built at least three analog quads and you know i gradually decided to switch all over to dji because of the clarity and quality of the video so i could see every Thing and not have to worry about the blackouts um so that's going to cost you a little bit more if you want to go hd uh this has a dji full-size air unit in it and um it, that's going to start you about 170 dollars so we're not going to include that into the price of the cost because you might want to go with you know uh an analog unit which is probably going to cost you you know whatever you want to spend for the camera you know they start at like 18 dollars for a decent camera um sky's the limit or a dvr unit which is like you know a cadex run cam uh turtle or uh what did i have a split three um those are about 60 bucks um so let's start from the frame this is a five inch um i think it's a 220 millimeter wheelbase if you're not familiar with that term it's the distance between um bolt to bolt on an angle uh for the props um and this is a little bit smaller than my previous five inch build um which was probably like a 230 a little bit bigger um and the compromise on this one is i don't have a lot of real estate to put a camera on the front once i put um this battery on if i have one in my pocket which i brought the wrong battery this is the wrong battery do i have the right battery I probably got it in the car. Once I put the, uh, I think it's like a 1300 milliamp hour battery on top, I really don't have a lot of real estate for a camera. But for me, I'm not flying a GoPro on this because I want to learn how to fly and not worry about crashing a GoPro. Um, I can take the video footage coming out of this, which is pretty good, and throw it into, you know, uh, stabilization software and kind of smooth it out if I really wanted it to. So I'm going to lower the cost of crash by not flying a GoPro. So this frame is an Ishin frame, which I hopefully will carry on my Amazon store if I ever get uh, wholesale approval from them. Um, and I like it because of the cost and a lot of guys kind of had decent reviews about it. So it's an Ishin frame. It's got about maybe four or five millimeter thick arms. It's not a unibody frame. So as you can see on the bottom, it is bolted together. Each arm is independent, which cost, which could cost you more in a crash because if it snaps off one of these arms, it might snap off the bottom plate or break the, uh, the the primary frame i guess you call us this bottom plate right here um but if you had to the thing about ishin is they carry a full line of replacement parts for all of their you know their their quads their frames and everything else and that's why i like them they're low they're low cost and you get decent quality um so the frame cost me about 25 dollars. i think i paid a little bit more for it because it is built around the dji air unit and it did come with these tpu printed um dji air unit antenna and air unit holders um but again for 25 bucks not bad i think i paid like maybe 20 bucks for a previous frame off of amazon so five bucks more i got the tpu um printed um accessories um as far as the motors go as i kind of just alluded i picked up the uh emax eco 2s they're newly released according to emax um and a lot of guys were saying excellent excellent motors they have a very nice fit and finish to them they look 
pretty. I mean, I'm not one of these guys that wanted to build a Ferrari, so I wasn't looking for you know motors that look like they were Ferrari rims. But these motors have power and they look good too. So if you're into looking good and getting a bang for your buck, I mean, the motors I think retail around $13. Um, you know, after the Black Friday sale, they seem to be pretty good motors. Again, I'm not a pro pilot and I'm not banging it around out here, but I've made a whole bunch of sloppy mistakes and I've never had anything like a lockout or failure or some kind of power amp current draw thing that would possibly cause this thing to crash. Um, those were, like I said, a Black Friday deal. I think I got them for like $10 a piece. So I paid about 40 bucks for them. But like I said, right about now, and they're probably selling for about $13, depending on where you get them. Um, when we get up to the actual speed controller and flight controller, I am a fan of the Mamba stuff. So the Diatone Mamba series of um, F4 controllers, they are low cost. They go, they start around $35. Um, for this 40 amp, it was about $40. Um, and I haven't had any, you know, issues with them. Um, they are not, you know, DJI plug-in compatible, so you will have to solder in your DJI wires to the appropriate UARTs and connection ports. But other than that, they seem to work well. I don't have any issues with it. I know there's probably going to be a lot of guys out there who will shoot that down for some reason. But I've built almost every um, quad I own on a Mamba 405 Mini or a Mamba 405 MK2, which is the 40 amp version, and I've had no issues. It's got an alarm. It's got a buzzer channel. It's got LED channels. It's got a lot of programmability functionality. I don't think it has a barometer. So if you're into you know taking it up and seeing how high you are, I don't think it has that. But other than that, I think this the quad i mean it's the controller the flight controller and uh speed controller that i'm going to be using in a lot of my builds just because it's low cost um and then when it comes to like i said this i'm using you know the dji uh system so i don't need a remote control trend or receiver i don't need um a vtx for video transmission um that's you know Part of the absorption of buying one of these dji units is you don't have those additional accessories um so you know, like I said, I paid 179, but if you think about it, if I had to go out and buy a camera, and then I had to go out and buy a VTX, and then I had to go out and depending on what you want to fly, if you want to fly Crossfire or whatever, it could cost you close to 150 bucks to buy an analog unit where you're not going to get the clarity that you get in this, not going to get the, you know, onboard recording. You know, this is almost like a DVR, like a run cam split or a turtle or something like that. You're going to get close to that um, if you want to go analog. So I know there's a lot of guys out there who fly analog because they say that it is, you know, um, low, lower latency. And, you know, for racing, I've seen guys do the videos where they swear they can knock off like a half a millisecond with an analog system. I would much rather have the clarity than the uh, the quality and clarity than the speed because I'm not that fast and I'm not planning on doing anything where I'm ripping through gates at like a half a second per gate. So that's pretty much the build. Um, I will leave a link to all of my components um, in the description below. Um, and if you're interested in building uh, something similar to this, like I said, not that expensive. And the, the advantage of building your own quad um, with your own components versus buying a quad from a, you know, a pre-made uh, manufacturer or someone who already put it together like iFlight or you know, even Esheen is that you can put the components that you want in it and probably get better components for a lower cost than what the components that are gonna come in the pre-built unit would be. So, and then you get, you know, probably some stuff that you can tweak and mod and play with. So I like building my own with the same money that I would spend on a pre-built quad. So if, it, if I'm thinking about buying, like my next quad, I was thinking about buying a four inch long range. If it's about $150, $170 with an analog unit, I'm gonna to try to do the same thing and build it with, you know, a DJI, um, vista system in it and you know decent motors and a decent controller so pretty much that's it for this build um five inches pretty pretty ballsy i can tell you right now i'm gonna be flying it with the uh run cams uh, nd filter on it hopefully i don't lose it out there um but i want to see what it can do um with these new props because like i said the previous props that i had were crazy they were just crazy like they were made for racing i could tell because they everything you did was just super over exaggerated fast and the, the control was ridiculous and i and i've really been practicing on the lower slower side than the fast racy side um so i'm gonna get a couple flights in and then we're gonna talk about um my new amazon store stay with me older out there than i thought my hands are gone so we're gonna try to fly the tiny whoop from inside the car
signal seems to be good. Let's see what we got. Man, this little thing is fast. the car this thing is ridiculous Change of plans. There are now some people uh, playing with dogs in the field, and I don't like flying with people. So let's talk about um, my Amazon store, man. Like I, I've been kind of on a, like not been vlogging because I've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to um, open this Amazon store, and I'm a little bit indecisive. Um, a lot of things that I do, um, I chicken out of because I overthink them, and I just said, you know what? I love FPV. I love drones. And instead of looking for deals and trying to bring them to you, I thought I would take the next step and open my own store and bring the deals directly to you. So over the last couple of months, I have uh, you know opened up an Amazon store, um, got my business license, opened up an end up Amazon store, and I have been trying to you know accumulate inventory to get into that inventory, uh, to get into my Amazon inventory, and try to launch somewhere um, beginning of January, mid of January, um, and 
initially it's going to be pretty much all quad or drone equipment gear and accessories i just gotta build the relationships with the vendors and find people to supply me with a lot of the stuff that i know you guys want to fly or i want to fly and you know i'm going to be bringing it to the amazon store um it's not as easy as i thought it was going to be um reached out to i think uh who was it it was uh tbs and tbs was like we're not gonna give you a wholesale license because you have an amazon store and not your own website so that might be the next um project for the store is to open up my own amazon i mean my own store so that i don't have to pay the amazon fees and just kind of like transition into my own entrepreneurship but uh, for now, I am going to be bringing you some stuff from Emacs. I'm going to be bringing you some stuff from Beta FPV. I'm going to bring you some stuff from a company called uh, King Kong or L A L D A R C. Um, and as I start to build more relationships, I am going to be bringing you, you know, the things that I see trending or the things that I think you like, like e-sheen, things that I think are great deals. So hopefully you guys who have hung around with me, who are gradually getting to FPV, um, will support the store, support the channel, and I, you know, will keep it going. I appreciate you watching, man. Um, I'm going to get back home and get out of the cold. I'll talk to you later.